السلام عليكم معكم مهيب القحطاني طالب سنة ثالث اليوم ابغى اشرح سكين كار ديزيز وكيت كونلي سندروم فنبدا بس بمراجعة لفاف ديسولد ريفيو بمر على الاسئلة على السريع شخص عنده لاود اس 1 نورمال اس 2 دي ستوريك مارمر الاس 1 هو ذا كلوجر اوف نايترو انشاكتوس بيت فالف اس 2 اللي هو الكلوجر اوف ذا وورد كان بولمنري فالف الدايستول شوف باخذ لكم قاعدة بس انه عشان الدايستول قاعد يتقفل قاعد يفتح الفالف ما بين ال right and left ventricle and right and left atrium to the right and left ventricle فايش الفالف اللي ما بين الاتريم والفنتركل اللي هو التريكوسبيد والمايترو هذه قاعد تفتح والدم قاعد ينزل ما بين الاتريم والفنتركل ف knowing this هذا that's what's happening during the diastole فاذا الدم قاعد ينزل من الاتريم للفنتركل وقاعد تسمع صوت معناته ان في مشكله لما الفالف ينفتح إذا في مشكلة مع إن مع الفالف ينفتح معناته إن في ستينوسس الريجار يصير لما الفالف يكون مقفل ما تتقفل زي الناس أما ستينوسس تصير إن الفالف يوم فتح ضيق فإذا في عندك أنت سامع من المايترال أريا سامع دايستوريك مرمر هذا تقول إن أوكي هذا مايترال ستينوسس طيب إذا سيستوريك مرمر في وقت السيستول قاعد تسمع من المايترال أريا مرمر معناته ان في دم قاعد يرجع من ال ventricles to the atrium for regurgitation فعلى العموم overall عندك ان الدايستول ايش يصير فيه؟ عندك المايترال ستينوسس تريكوسبيد ستينوسس عندك اورتيك regurgitation و ال pulmonary regurgitation بعد كذا في السيستول ايش ممكن يصير؟ مايترال ريجارجيتيشن تريكوسبيد ريجارجيتيشن ممكن يصير عندك وورتك ستينوسس ممكن يكون عندك بالمنري ستينوسس ففي هذه الحاله اذا عندك دايستوليك مرمر المايترال اريا معناته عندك مايترال ستينوسس اذا عندك مايترال ستينوسس احنا نعرف ان في روماتيك هارت ديزيز غالبا ممكن هي اللي تسوي من حضرة الاندوكارديتس والروماتيك هارت ديزيز بتلقى ان الروماتيك هارت ديزيز غالبا يجي معاه مايتروستينوسس ف فالاجابه روماتيك هارت ديزيز واللي بعده وات از ذا كومبليكيشن اوف مايتروستينوسس الكومبليكيشن بحيث انه ايش اللي قاعد الضرر قاعد يصير للاتريوم فغالبا انه لفت اتريوم ثرومبوس ما يكون له دخل في الفنتركلز ولا له دخل في الاورتيك فالف. آه بعد لان الدم قاعد يتجمع اذا ما هو قاعد يطلع زي الناس ما بين الاتريوم والفنتركل معناته الدم لسه قاعد يتجمع في الاتريوم ف the problem is in the atrium ما هو في الفنتركل. آه بعد what is not a cause of mitral regurgitation آه mitral regurgitation طيب فاحنا نعرف تريكوسبيد فالف في 3 كاسبس والمايترال فالف في تو كاسب فباي كاسبس فالف الجواب واللي بعده ان اورتيك ريجارجيتيشن ذا فلو اوف بلود فروم فعندك ان اللفت فنتر كل قاعد تطلع الدم دورينج سيستول طيب ولما تجي تتقفل الاورتيك فالف في في الدايستول الدم ما هو الكسب الكسب ما هي قاعد تتقفل زي الناس الورتك فالف ما هي قاعد تتقفل زي الناس فالدم قاعد يرجع من الورتك الى اللفت فنتركل ففي هذه الحاله الورتك باك تو اللفت فنتركل ان دايستول وبعدها اللي هو في الورتك سينوسس وش اوف فورم از كوريكت ان قلنا ان في الورتك سينوسس والبالماري سينوسس حنسمع سيستوليك مرمر هيرد ان ذا اورتك اريا فالجواب سيستوريك مرمر هيرد ان ذا اورتك اريا الجواب اللي بعده ذا اناتومي فيسيولوجي اوف اورتك فالف اورتك فالف اوبن ان سيستول ان كلوزد ان كلاستول يعني هذا اللي مرينا عليه طيب عشان نبدا اللكشر هذا الاوبجيكتيف طيب نبدا من الباثو فيسيولوجي اوف اكيوت كورنيري سيندروم الباثو فيسيولوجي هو ايش قاعد يصير؟ آه هذه بشكل عام اني ثيروسكلروسيس، this is the pathophysiology of it. 
عندك انه قاعد مو بقاعد تتقفل زين تسدد شوي صار في ستينوسس بعده صار في سفير ستينوسس بعده توتال اكلودد فاسل لما يصير عندك توتال اكلودد يا الله قاعد يطلع دم قاعد تمر من عنده هنا تبدا تصير عندك ايش سكيني كارتيزيس لانه الدم مو قاعد يوصل للقلب سيريبر فاسكولار ديزيز صار عندك جلطه the blood is not reaching to the brain the cerebrum or a peripheral vascular disease by which in you the blood is not re- reaching to the periphery of the body but this is the transition from chronic to acute because uh, in this case this is chronic chronic here all of a sudden you get symptoms when all of a sudden you get symptoms it, it turns into acute uh, here's the same thing Uh, the scheme you can see that uh, fatty streak after that a uh, fibrous plaque turning into occlusive atherosclerotic plaque uh, during the the sign uh, the, this time uh, it's just clinically silent it's chronic chronic with increasing age uh, all of a sudden you got to effort angina clonication by effort angina clonication that you you establish an angina and it might the plaque rupture or, or fissure, uh, you might get a rupture in it, or you might get a thrombus, which uh, the vessel totally occludes. When the vessel totally occludes, you either get an unstable angina, which is not in the case of the vessel totally occluding, but uh, MI, coronary death, as we said, stroke due to the blood not reaching to the brain, and critical leg ischemia, as in peripheral vascular disease. Uh, he, in this case, uh, we must know the side effects because by time, if we do not work on the modifiable side effects, on which we'll talk about later, uh, if we don't work on the modifiable uh, side effects, then uh, the case will get worse and worse. The, the fibrous plague will turn into a close of the sclerotic plague With, uh, with time. So we must work on the modifiable uh, risk factors, modify uh, yeah, the risk factors to work on it. So uh, here, uh, talking about acute coronary syndrome, we have uh, three uh, subtypes, which is unstable uh, angina, non-ST segment elevation MI, ST segment elevation MI. They, we have, uh, they all have the similar pathophysiology in which we're talking about a thrombus, we're talking about atherosclerosis, we're talking about whatever, either a thrombus or an embolus. Uh, all have a similar presentation, early management rules. Uh, chest pain, usually uh, shortness of breath. Uh, but in cases of ST elevation, MI, it requires evaluation for acute re- per- perfusion intervention because usually when we're talking about uh, uh, ST elevation, MI, Uh, then we're talking about uh, a vessel that's totally occluded. So uh, here, let's say, when, uh, f- let's say for example, this uh, figure is better. For example, you might get uh, unstable angina symptoms from this vessel. After that, it turned into this vessel, you might get a non-ST segment elevation. With type, you did not work on it, you did not take any drugs for it, Uh, the, you did not work on the risk factors, it will turn into uh, ST segment elevation or total occluded um, vessel. So, uh, in this case, uh, the, in the unstable angina, you have a non inclusive thrombus, uh, non specific ECG. Uh, you won't see any changes during the uh, found in the ECG. Normal cardiac enzymes, the non ST elevation MI. Uh, there's a clothing thrombus sufficient to cause tissue damage and mild, uh, myocardial necrosis, but uh, not sufficient enough to have uh, severe or uh, in case uh, a total occluded uh, thrombus. So you can work on it. You don't have to do a acute reperfusion intervention. Uh, you can work on it through thrombolysis and we'll talk about it later. As to the, you'll see on the ECG, which is very important to know, ST depression, T-wave inversion on ECG, you'll find elevated cardiac enzymes. And then in the case of ST elevation, you'll have more severe symptoms, 
but you'll have ST cell elevations on ECG or neural left bundle branch block and elevated cardiac enzymes. So coming to the risk factors, the risk factors are very important. Uh, there's risk factors that you can't change, which is like family history, non-modifiable, age, non-modifiable, uh, and other risk factors that you may change, like smoking, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, dyslipidemia, and uh, whatever. You can, uh, you, you can work on the diabetes mellitus, dyslipidemia, hypertension. How do, why do I say it's a modifiable? Because you, can, you may adhere to the medications, go to a good doctor, adhere to the medications, keep your uh, blood sugar low, keep your, uh, hyper, your uh, blood pressure low, and this will solve the problem. Not adhering to the medications, keeping your high, bl uh, high blood sugar, keeping your uh, blood pressure high, you, in turn, you'll make each, and, uh, each uh, you'll make your case worse, and uh, it will uh, include more. Uh, so these are the risk factors you must know. These are very important. And after that, identification of acute coronary syndrome patients in the emergency department. Uh, the history is important. Uh, uh, the patient will come with chest pain, epigastric pain, uh, non-traumatic in origin, uh, central uh, compression or crushing chest pain. You will feel pressure, tightness, heaviness, cramping, unexplained di indigestion, epigastric pain, be because the heart enlargement maybe and uh, radiating pain in neck, jaw, shoulders, back, or, or one or both arms. Uh, you'll have associated dyspnea, associated nausea and vomiting, associated diaphoresis. In these cases, when you find these symptoms, uh, if these symptoms are present, you must obtain an ECG to check is it unstable angina, non ST elevation, or ST elevation. After that, the acute management includes in you to uh, the initial evaluation. Uh, you see these symptoms, you obtain an ECG. You must stabilize the patient. You must uh, score the risk of the patient. And after that, do the focus cardiac care. If he, if he needs uh, reperfusion, you must do reperfusion. If he needs to take only medication, only medication. Every case is uh, significant and differs from the other. After that, patients with typical angina and absent angina, uh, in diagnosis of unstable angina, here we're doing a diagnosis of unstable angina. Uh, the, the, the patients with typical angina, they increase in severity or duration, that has onset at rest or at low level of exertion, unrelieved by the amount of nitroglycerin and rest that have previously lead to pain. But patients that are not known to have typical angina. The first episode that ever came to them with chest pain, the first episode with usual activity or at rest within the previous two weeks and prolonged pain at rest. Uh, during the physical examination, you must take the vitals, cardiovascular system, check the shortness of risk respiratory system, abdomen, neurological status, recognize factors that increase risk. Well, as uh, we said, the hypotension, tachycardia, uh, JVD, uh, pulmonary edema, new murmurs, health sound, diminished peripheral pulses, signs of strokes, you must recognize them and uh, assess them. And uh, as we said, here is a normal ECG, here is ST depression, you'll find, and ST elevation. Uh, the cardiac markers that you're checking for. Uh, Choconin is a very specific cardiac marker. It uh, provides a very good prognostic information, uh, but uh, CKMB is not very specific, but uh, you may find it uh, earlier than uh, troponin. So, uh, but uh, pulse positives are, uh, are found. So uh, here you can see that the prognosis with troponin, if the troponin is higher, the prognosis is worse. Here's the timing of release, as you see the myoglobin and CK, Isoforms are uh, least earlier than uh, troponin. And uh, to uh, and for cardiac uh, care goals, you, should, you must decrease the amount of myocardial necrosis. How? Either by medications or you must do a catheter. You must do reperfusion. Uh, to assess the reperfusion, uh, evalu to evaluate if he needs a catheter or he doesn't need a catheter, you must risk. Uh, you, you must calculate the risk of actual acute coronary syndrome. Uh, there's a risk score that you must take into consideration. 
and the, uh, based on that, you may uh, rank the categories low risk, intermediate risk, high risk. And uh, this is the TIMI risk score. Uh, and uh, the higher the risk, the more uh, likely you must do a re urgent revascularization. Uh, and you have your invasive therapy, which is revascularization, coronary angiography. Uh, you must give them mono and heparin. This is part of the management of all. Uh, glycoprotein uh, 2B and 3A are very helpful uh, before uh, revascularization or coronary angiography, uh, revascularization. But uh, uh, he, the problem is it's a very expensive drug and it's not, uh, he, he, it is not given usually. And for conservative therapy, maybe early revascularization or you don't need to do a... Uh, uh, this is, uh, you don't need to do uh, a catheter. Uh, mono, heparin, lepidogrel, all of these drugs that you've taken before on pharma will help you. Uh, these are the treatments. So uh, nitroglycerin is fast dilator. Uh, to, it keeps the patient pain-free. Also aspirin is just both also a painkiller, but uh, it's also uh, thrombolytic pain, uh, uh, drug, so uh, it is good for uh, uh, cases of uh, MI. A beta blockers to, re to reduce the mortality, but you should take into consideration, the consideration the, uh, that you can't give it while there's a life uh, congestive heart failure. Uh, ACE inhibitors also to decrease the blood pressure. Uh, also, all these uh, platelet uh, anticoagulant uh, drugs are helpful, and all the strong blockers, which is when left on, are helpful. Uh, after that, the secondary prevention after post MI, after uh, you have stabilized, after you're dismissing, you must tell the patient to uh, prevent to have uh, prevent these diseases. If he has hypertension, diabetes, to control it, should not smoke. You should be on a good diet, physical activity, rehab program. The blood pressure must be uh, lower than you uh, than uh, than one forty to ninety, and if he has diabetes mellitus or chronic kidney disease, lower than one thirty to eighty. Um, and uh, small time to stop smoking. Do more physical activity, diet, patient education and uh, monitor psychosocial impact. Uh, thank you very much.